the Columbus legacy, the Native Americans. First encounter. James Long Bear Reevy is a descendant of the Lenape, one of several tribes that lived in an area called Lenape Hocking before the Europeans arrived. The area included what is now eastern Pennsylvania, southeastern New York State, New Jersey, western Long Island, and northern Delaware. Later, the Lenape were called the Delaware because of their location along the Delaware River. The, the question is, what is this fan that I'm carrying here? This is a fan that uh, we jokingly say it's a Indian air conditioning. And uh, uh, when the Indian people are dancing or in the, the hot summer's time, these fans are often carried. And they're made out of uh, turkey tail feathers. Many people only know of Indians or Native Americans through exhibits in museums or what they see in movies or read in novels. These images are often drawn from our ideas of Western or Plains Indians. Native Americans of Pennsylvania or the Eastern Woodlands are very different. It is a myth that Native Americans were a simple people who lived in a simple time. When Columbus arrived in the Caribbean in 1492, there was a wide range of cultures among the estimated 15 million Native Americans in the United States. In what is now Pennsylvania, there were five or six major cultural groups. These groups belonged to two different language families, Algonquin and Iroquoian, and were socially structured in different ways, either politically organized into large settlements or dispersed into smaller family groupings. The life ways of the Lenape people in Pennsylvania have been studied by archaeologists and historians. No one source of information can be used to learn what Native American life was like in the past. Scientists rely upon and combine historical records, usually written by Europeans who first came in contact with the Indians, maps, atlases, portraits, sketches, myths and legends which are handed down by word of mouth from generation to generation, and archaeological evidence. The Indian island at Waterloo Village in Stanhope, New Jersey, is a reconstruction of how experts think the Lenape organized their communities. The Lenape lived in small villages or bands of people that were actually small hamlets where the men and women would all live together in these houses made out of bark or reeds. And they earned their living actually uh, in different ways. Women worked around the villages in the gardens and gathered things from the woods where Men oftentimes went away hunting, trapping, fishing, and would um, disperse themselves out farther, coming back to the villages. When the Europeans came here and met the Lenape, they had a variety of new foods that they came across. Corn was a major one, beans, squash, pumpkins, even sunflowers and tobacco were grown here and taken over to Europe. But the Indians had a variety of things that grew out in the woods, medicinal herbs and roots and berries that they also gathered and shared with these early Europeans. The Lenape myth of creation was they believed that the whole world was covered with water at first. And the first thing to surface was the turtle. And on the back of the turtle, mud came up. And from this mud, there became one spout. Not spout. This is a tortoise lying in the water around it. When the tortoise gradually raised its back up high and the water ran off of it, and thus the earth became dry, and there grew a tree out of the middle of the earth. The 1500s and 1600s were times of upheaval for both Native Americans and Europeans as they struggled to survive in and control what is now Pennsylvania. Once the Swedes, Dutch, French, and English began to colonize the Northeast, the lives and culture of both Native Americans and Europeans were forever changed. Contact with Europeans produced enormous changes in Native American lifeways. Stone tools such as these were replaced by iron tools. Glass beads replaced ones made of shell and bone. Brass kettles such as this replaced prehistoric pots. Kettle scraps were cut into triangular points and replaced those made of stone. Native clay smoking pipes were the most resistant to change because they were associated with religion that was not abandoned in favor of Christianity. 
The most important knowledge Native Americans gave to Europeans was the location of choice land. The Lenape people felt that the land should be owned by everyone, that no one had an individual ownership of the land, because the sky and the water and the land was for all people to use. And uh, that, that became the early conflict between Europeans and uh, the Indian people in America. In Pennsylvania, William Penn negotiated many treaties with Native Americans, beginning with the Delaware Indian deed in 1682. He was considered not only just, but kind by the Native Americans with whom he dealt. But after Penn's death in 1718, his sons violated the goodwill their father had established by producing the walking purchase deed of 1737. They declared that the land the Indians had to vacate was the area that a walker could cover in a day and a half. The English surveyed a straight path and cut down trees to make the walk easier and hired three runners to mark the distance. So instead of covering the expected 35 miles, the runners covered 65 miles. Lapa Winso, a Lenape chief, was furious to find the Lenape had been cheated out of so much land. He said the walkers should have walked a few miles and then have sat down and smoked a pipe and now and then shot a squirrel and not have kept upon the run, run, run all day. As the lands of their ancestors were occupied by Europeans, Native Americans became increasingly dependent on trade. The exchange of pelts and furs for European goods was common practice. Relatively peaceful tribes began to fight among themselves for limited resources. By the late 1600s, the Lenape had lost most of their trade to the other more powerful competing tribes, such as the Susquehannock, and much of their land to the Dutch, Swedish, and English. Some Native Americans lost their lives fighting among themselves or against Europeans, but many more died from diseases brought from Europe, like measles and especially smallpox. By 1760, there were very few Lenape or Delaware left in the state of Pennsylvania. By 1980, there were only 250 descendants left in the state. As a Lenape, this concerns Jim Reeby. It's very important for me to keep my culture as a Lenape Indian because I feel that uh, I can pass it on to future generations of Indians as well as non-Indians in New Jersey and Pennsylvania. A copy of the program you've just seen can be purchased through Penn State Media Sales at mediasales.psu.edu or by calling 800-770-2111.